what is beta as a function of mean? I can try putting x dash there in that equation and see what is coming out to be. So if I use this equation and x dash equals no x equals x dash plus b. Yeah. Are we doing beta as same because this is a similar transformation just being looped at the other frame. So if I use the same function, I because if you jump to the other frame, the situation is exactly identical. The only difference is the other guy is moving in the reverse direction. So do you have some justification of using some other function? I can use other function as well, but that has to be the same function because it's the same nature of the transformation. You can try putting other function and you can use an additional coordinate but when you will put that coordinate you will get that both the functions are identical. So x plus bt into beta minus b and t dash is equal to t dash plus b x dash times beta whole multiplied by beta. Okay. Alright, so if I again put the speed, the speed of light in this equation, I can replace x and t's by 1 everywhere. So I am putting the speed of light x equals 1 plus b times beta squared minus b into 1 plus And what I am getting is x dash equals 0. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot the factor of B. So from here, if you calculate b, what uh, beta what it comes out to be? Beta equals one over one minus b squared. Okay. So beta equals plus minus of this. So I got beta in terms of velocity. All right. So let's plug that in here. It might be plus minus as well, right? So now I have to look for the right root or maybe both the roots may tell me the right thing. My beta should be positive. Time, this is not time, this is time coordinate. Time coordinate might be negative as well. So, what is the problem in putting beta is equal to minus of 1 root of 1 over 1 minus v squared? But at least for a while, it, it's clear that. If I put the speed of light in here, it would be over c square, okay, just to set it up. And from this, you can see that we cannot access c. Rather, everything would be turned out to be imaginary and nothing would make, make sense in the real plane. So, I just thought that the speed of light is constant in every frame and it follows that the speed of light is the maximum as well. Shiva Ramakrishna, this was your question.
here. So beta equals plus minus of this. So we have this transformation that B plus minus of this quantity as well. If, we, if you look here, then if I put the minus root, let's say, let's say I put the minus root. So, as t is increasing, t dash would be decreasing. That means time is going in the reverse direction. Time can be negative, but it would be going in the reverse direction, which doesn't make sense. So hence it doesn't make sense to humans. I'm eliminating the minus root. Okay. So beta equals just this. And and this is uh, this is what uh, is called the Lorentz transformation. This is just Lorentz transformation, not no big deal in driving these equations from. <clears throat> but uh, now you know now you know vector spacing you know vector algebra what is the nature of these transformations these are linear transformations multiplied just by some constant factor and uh, you also know this fact that linear transformations can be visualized as rotations they can be looked as rotations example you know already I'm rubbing this part. So in our 11th and 12th standard, we used to have this xy plane, and we used to rotate this xy plane by some theta, and we used to get. Let's say new frame is x dash y dash, and this x dash e equals to something in this this frame, and y dash equals something as well. What used to be that? I forgot. Cos theta of x minus sine theta of y, and this used to be sine theta of x plus cos theta of y. So these transformations and these transformations have the same nature, except some v. I can find some corresponding theta as well. But just multiply some by some factor. Okay, let's say some factor. So if someone is doing this thing at the first time, he doesn't know what is coming next. So from here. If there is, if there exists some similarity, because I know this transformation is linear, that transformation is linear as well. So something has to be <coughs> similar in these two, which I can find as a common thing. So if I have a coordinate point here, you know that there would be some distance from the origin. Fixed as L in the new coordinate also it would be L only. So distance is being conserved in this transformation. So I suspect I did not assume it, I just suspect that distance might be same in this as well. But not the uh, spatial distance, some weird kind of distance. I don't know what it might be, some different nature should be there. So, so in this transformation, L squared equals x dash squared plus y dash squared equals x squared plus y squared. X and y were my coordinates, x dash and y dash were the transformed ones. So I think of doing a similar with these. Okay. So what you can do, you can define some time, let's say, some, not exactly time or distance, let's just call that S, 
which must be equal to x dash squared plus t dash squared. Okay. So what is this x dash squared plus? This should be beta squared into x squared plus b squared t squared plus 2bt plus t squared plus g squared x squared minus 2bx sorry 2bx where minus 2bx only which one this 2x bt Oops, yeah, this would be minus, and that would be, yeah, okay. So, nothing is cancelling, right? Nothing is cancelling. Yeah. So, you mean that I do something like x dash squared minus t dash squared. So that what that would be that would be the x square plus b square t square minus two x b t minus t square minus b square x square plus two b x. Those were like going this way, and here we are having to want it being contracted. So I did not uh, make an assumption from this. I just said that it's a linear transformation. So it should. I'm just making vague assumptions right now. I'm just trying to calculate x dash squared plus b dash squared. I'm not telling you that this is equal to some quantity. What? Why? I don't know that. So these terms are cancelling. So this what? squared minus b squared plus b squared t squared minus b squared x squared. Okay, so if you mean this beta squared into x squared. Okay, so then it would be x squared minus t squared. Which is so this is equal to one over beta squared and this is cancelling. So it's equal to x square minus t square. Okay. So there is problem with this kind of transformation. There is some problem with this kind of transformation. Something being constructed out of this expression x dash squared plus t dash squared is not being conserved and something else is being conserved which is equal to x dash squared minus t dash squared or let's say t dash squared minus x dash squared so this something called s s is being conserved now 
here x is having the units of distance right what it is having some units of distance and that distance by i mean that t and x are same so this is some kind of thing which is being conserved so so if this thing is being conserved then the conservation of this thing is being implied from only the assumption that the speed of light was constant and all laws were same so from using these two assumptions i constructed a quantity which is x dash square minus t dash square and if you, if you just start moving not only in x direction but other directions as well then you could write s as equal to let's say you travel some distance l in x direction okay and then you traveled uh, now you are not traveling in x direction but you are traveling in other directions as well so what you uh, your distance would be so l squared would be equal to summation of your coordinates squared right some general distance so here i can replace x by that generalized quantity which is let's say some bigger x squared minus t squared we are x squares because x squared plus y squared plus z squared and so on if you are having other spatial dimensions so somewhere i, I have a feeling i have a feeling that every my each assumption the information of my every assumption is contained in this expression this says something which is conserved so i construct another quantity if this is some sorry it is made of squared this is some uh, notion of distance right in pythagoras theorem i used to say l squared equals x squared plus y squared and so on. similarly here i am having a different notion of x is s squared so if i construct a differential quantity let's call it ds so ds squared would be equal to dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared minus dt squared okay old members this might seem similar we already calculated everything using this thing being conserved so we already have a notion that every assumption from all this calculation is being already contained in this expression so this is something which will be conserved in every frame right this is what i am getting after all this treatment i could do the other way round as well ds square i can round as right as dt square minus all this and there is no difference actually because it's just some other quantity here let's call it s dash so ds dash square equals minus ds square it's just the same quantity i'm just negating its sign so now until now this was very very basic thing which we have already discussed somewhere some time ago and this uh, this thing or maybe you call it this thing is called a metric okay metric might have read on wikipedia pages given the metric of something metric of this space so uh, what kind of space is this this is a simple space i mean is the space which is all around you right if things are moving at constant velocities then you would be having this kind of expression being conserved so that means the space 
you are having here, here is similar to your 3D space which is generalized, more generalized, right? Here not only this quantity is being conserved, but something bigger is being conserved, okay? Something even bigger, having more information about time as well. So this, this metric has a special name called Minkowski metric. So your usual, your usual 3D space has a very simple metric dl squared equals dx squared plus dy squared plus d z squared sorry this metric you know already this nothing but just a Pythagoras theorem so this was being conserved without including time when time is included this is the corresponding metric okay So another thing, how to connect it to geometry? You see, uh, you had this notion of Pythagoras theorem. So using Pythagoras theorem, you can calculate everything related to 3D space. Everything is being contained in that metric. You construct every geometrical law from there. So similarly, in the space-time coordinates, this Minkowski metric has the same role. It can tell you everything about that space, how the space is behaving. How any differential element of that space is behaving? So you can calculate other quantities as well. So this was all about <coughs> special theory, the very basic part. And if you know this, you can uh, go through paradoxes and uh, other things as well in SR. <coughs> so I, I'm just giving a very uh, rough introduction of GR now. Very very basic, not provided you have. I know the time is up. So you all have read that uh, general relativity has gravity also, bending of space-time coordinate, stress and strain of space-time volumes. So that is even some more generalized space having gravity involved okay so i should have uh, some other metric in that space also where gravity is involved okay and this assumption i can make that if i take if i construct a metric let's say um, dh squared equal something having gravity as well I have gravity involved in it and if I take out gravity from this, I should get this, right? So your, by the way, uh, can you guys really visualize how space time bends, curves, stresses, strains, you might have see, uh, seen that uh, ball and cloth experiment being, things being put on a cloth and that is being bent. So, this metric will give you the visualization of how things are happening. So, this metric must be equal to this ds squared times some g of something. I don't know what g is. Multiplication because, okay, let's not take multiplication. I have no problem. Let's say it's equal to some k times ds squared plus something else. So this could be a general metric which will reduce to the Minkowski metric <coughs> when we take out gravity. That means when we take out gravity, g equal to 0 and k equals 1. Okay. So I guess let's see this metric next time. That's all for today. So next time we won't be talking about this, all these basic things. We would be uh, looking how gravity bends in space time. And, and and things are not covered in SR yet completely. You should uh, uh, write down. You should try to live into.
add and first paradox. Twin paradox, everybody knows. So you're not going to look into twin paradox. That would be too kiddie. There's other paradox called Bell spaceship paradox. Someone knows about it. Who knows about Bell spaceship paradox? This is more interesting than Aaron Fest paradox, by the way. To me, it's more interesting. I don't know about you. Ladder one is not actually a paradox. Yeah, okay, you can write down ladder paradox. So these three are very interesting paradoxes. And next time when we meet, it won't be this much long and boring because then we would know things. We would know how to compute with, uh, compute with these things. So this was the uh, first time it's been this much of boring. Next time it won't, I promise you. So now uh, we know almost everything you need to know about SR to read something else. By the way, uh, uh, in the interviews I asked to many of you that if you are can, uh, if you are adding the velocity simply as let's say v1 plus v2. And V1 and V2 are individually allowed to be less, uh, less constrained to be less than the speed of light. But V1 plus V2 can exceed the speed of light. Right? I ask you if I am moving at point A C, you are moving towards me at point A C. With respect to some rest frame, what would be the velocity with which I observe you? Most of you said 1.6 C. But that was wrong. Because it shouldn't exceed the speed of light in any frame. So you just look into this problem. What? How do you calculate the velocities? This is, this is a very simple task you can do right now. As well. Okay. Any questions? I know I drive the most of the content, almost every content from the new skills lecture, but I like it pretty well. So, next time we look into this metric. Uh, by the way, there is another very interesting thing called FLRW metric. And this is a metric which tells you how free space is expanding. Because we say by Hubble's law that universe is expanding. So, what is the mathematical notion for that? So, this metric gives you the idea. So again, if you ask me what is a matrix, and then I would simply tell you that matrix is just some differential notion of distances, some kind of distances or quantity which is being conserved in some frame or some special kind of a space. In quantum mechanics, we have Hilbert spaces, so there are other things conserved which are a bit complex than these. So you might look into that as well and then we meet next time. So that's all for today.